ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله واصحابه ومن سار على نهجه ومستن بسنته الى يوم الدين اما بعد فقد امرنا سبحانه وتعالى في تنزيله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون ثم اما بعد my brothers and sisters first and foremost we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower his mercy and his acceptance upon each and every one of us on this blessed day of this blessed hour of Yawm al-Jum'ah, Allahumma Ameen. Today what I'd like to do is share with you the concluding passages or verses of Surah Al-Ahzab. These are verses you hear constantly, Imams love to recite them. And this is where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, Ya ayyuha alladheena amanu attaqu Allah, wa qoolu qawlan sadeedah. يُصْلِحْ لَكُمْ أَعْمَالَكُمْ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ وَمَنْ يُطِعِ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ فَقَدْ فَازَ فَوْزًا عَظِيمًا فَقَدْ فَازَ فَوْزًا عَظِيمًا Now, until the end of the surah. My brothers and sisters, one thing you want to know about uh, Surah Al-Ahzab. This is a surah that deals with a lot of family-related issues that are often misunderstood or tough to explain. So this is the kind of surah that you go to when you want to address those particular issues in the most correct form that's pleasing to Allah. But you're not really sure how to do that. Or you don't understand some of these issues pertaining to the scarf, to the hijab, the role of a man, the role of the woman, and their interaction and relationship, and things like that. The answers to this is found throughout the Qur'an, but especially in Surah Al-Ahzab. What's amazing to me is how this surah concludes itself. The parting message of this chapter, Allah is talking to people of iman, people of faith. So all of us here are people of faith. So listen very carefully. Allah said, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, O people of faith, iman. Allah, the first thing He tells you is, have taqwa of Allah. Ittaqullah. If you're still uncertain what taqwa is, it's the Arabic term used for consciousness of Allah. Not necessarily fear of Allah. Fear of Allah is an extension or a connotation of taqwa. Taqwa comes from the word wiqayatun. And wiqayatun literally means you take the steps to protect yourself and your family from dangers that are lurking around you. So when you go home, you lock the doors, you turn on the security alarm, that's taqwa. Because you're protecting yourself and your family from any potential danger outside. From a spiritual sense, you're doing what is required of you. Allah commands you to do certain things and stay away from certain things. And if you disobey that order, then there's a consequence. But as long as you live your life doing everything you can to protect your spirit, to protect your faith, this is taqwa. You're always thinking about Allah. Now why am I saying all of this? I really want you to understand one thing about the introduction of this verse. It's not just people of Iman. It's people of faith who take taqwa very seriously. Because there's a lot of people who have faith, but they live a very easygoing life. They don't really follow or adhere to the rulings of religion. So they kind of go with the flow. Not in this audience. In this particular audience of the verse, these are people who are taking taqwa really seriously. May Allah make us from amongst them. Allahumma ameen. Here's the first thing Allah tells you. Have taqwa. And the way that you're going to achieve it, وَقُولُوا قَوْلًا سَدِيدًا Allah says, speak clear 
and speech that doesn't have any doubt or ambiguity in it. Sadida literally comes from the word sadda. And sadda means to repair something or to patch a wall or to stuff something. So if there was a crack in the wall and you patched it with cement or whatever it is, this is what sadda is. Now what does that have to do with speech? Allah is clearly saying, when you speak to one another, make sure that you're clear. There's no ambiguity. Make sure that you're direct and you're forward, but you'd also do this in a civilized way. Why? Because you have taqwa. You're always thinking and you always remember, Allah's listening to me. So I gotta be careful what I say and how I say it. And if you're still not sure how to do this, other chapters of the Qur'an teach you how to speak to each other. In surah number 25, Allah says, Surah Al-Furqan, وَإِذَا خَاطَبَهُمُ الْجَاهِلُونَ قَالُوا سَلَامًا Whenever the jahil, the real ignorant one, and one of the signs of ignorance is the ignorant one can control the tone of his or her voice. So Allah uses the word khatab from khutbah. They're raising their voice when they talk to you. So Allah says that if you're ever confronted with somebody who raises their voice, trying to engage in confrontation with you, or even in some cases trying to instigate you, come on, say something. Come on, fight back. You know what Allah told you to do? Qalu salama. You respond with peace. That's the lesson for Muslims. Whenever you're in that predicament, the first thing you have to think about is responding in a peaceful and dignified way. Regardless if you're in a room filled with people, regardless if you're in a home filled with people, regardless of your relationship and your friendships, it doesn't matter. The moment that you're put in a situation where your taqwa and your faith is put to the test even by speech, Allah says, watch out. Respond but be civilized. This is what qulu qawlan sadida. You know what's amazing to me about this ayah? Allah doesn't tell you what to say. He tells you how you should say what you choose to say. And secondly, the human tongue is amazing to me. Because it's the one organ I mean, the tongue doesn't have a bone. It doesn't have any sharp edges. But it's powerful and strong enough to break someone's heart. And at the same time, it's powerful and strong enough to repair that heart. Depending on how you use it. So one of the rules, Allah says, when you speak to each other, don't go around in circles with your words. Don't leave someone in confusion and questioning what they really mean when they said, when they said that. I don't get it. I'm still confused, I'm still lost. Allah said, as a believer, as someone of faith, you're always clear in your speech, but in a dignified and respectful way. The verse continues. So what's in it for you when you do that? See, the Qur'an never tells you to do something except there's either a consequence or a reward. There's some result that you get out of the choice you make. So if you do this, here is the result. يُصْلِحْ لَكُمْ أَعْمَالَكُمْ That's one. وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ That's two. وَمَنْ يُطْعِ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ Here's the third, but it's a condition. فَقَدْ فَازَ فَوْزًا عَظِيمًا That's the third reward. So the first thing, the first incentive for you is, Allah will cleanse, perfect your actions, the way you behave. So if you're ever concerned about how you conduct yourself anywhere, in any place, your starting point to rectify that is, how do you talk to people? How do you address them? If you see kids that are really na loud and obnoxious, do you talk down to them or do you treat them like human beings? Do you treat them like furniture, just sort of push them around and pretend they have no feelings, you don't listen, you don't communicate? 
Or do you actually genuinely sit down and say, I want to hear qawlan sadida and I'll give you qawlan sadida. Because that's what a great man by the name of Luqman alayhi salam did with his son. Not only did he sit his son down and says, look, I want to give you some advice, but it was clear, explicit advice in terms his son could understand. So what was the result? Allah made you beautiful. So your words are beautiful, but as a result, Allah made your actions beautiful. So now, even if you are not fluent or eloquent enough to speak properly, if you struggle to do that sort of thing, but you have faith in your heart and you have taqwa of Allah, you're always thinking Allah's watching me, then the next time you stand up in line, and the line looks so long, you stand up with patience. And you relax. Why? Yuslih lakum a'malukum. Allah is purifying your actions. The next time somebody cuts you off on the road, because you have the intention or because you speak qawlan sadida, you don't let this stuff get to you. If it's potentially dangerous, that's a different issue. But we're talking about somebody who's simply careless around you. You don't let it get to you. But you try your best to address it in a respectful way. As a result, Allah made you beautiful. But that's not the only thing. وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ The process of doing something like this isn't easy. You're gonna make mistakes. You're gonna say things that when you go home and you think, my goodness, I didn't mean it that way. That's not what I intended to say. You totally misinterpreted what I said. I didn't do that. I didn't mean it that way. Every one of us has a story like this. Where you have an intention and you want to follow that intention with speech, but sometimes it just comes out in a different way. Well, you know what Allah said to you? I'll forgive you. وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ I'll forgive you for that mistake. Don't worry about it. However, the condition وَمَن يُطِعِ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ And whoever obeys Allah and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that's the condition. So if you want that forgiveness, if you want all this beauty given to you, then you're gonna have to make sure that you carry these two ingredients with you everywhere you go. This book and the legacy of our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I've asked and I've put forward this question to you in the past. If you ever want to test yourself how much you love the Prophet ﷺ, ask yourself one question and see how well you can answer it. How much do you love him? ﷺ? Do you love him only when you come to a masjid? Do you love him only when there's hardship, tragedy, loss? Do you love him throughout all the good times, the happy times? Do you love him when you walk out of this building, wherever you may be? And loving him means that you try to reflect your lifestyle as close as possible to his lifestyle. So do you love him the next time you disagree with someone? Do you think about, what would Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say or do at this point? You ever meet somebody who wants to correct you? So they quote you a verse. But the, the, the tone in which they quote you this verse, it's like they're looking for drama. They're looking for a confrontation. So they'll come up to you and say, Ya Akhi, Allah said this and this in the Qur'an. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi never did that. And they use certain hand gestures. Here's my question. I've never read a hadith of the Prophet ﷺ speaking to his companions this way. He never introduced Qur'an in this manner to the people around him. So why would some people do this? This is a lack of control. These are people who can't perform or have qawl and sadida. So as a result, their actions aren't the best. وَمَن يُطِعَ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَ فَقَدْ فَازَ فَوْزًا عَظِيمًا This is the person that is فَازَ فَوْزًا عَظِيمًا They are the true champion. What an immense reward they get. Listen to how this conversation started. It only started off with the tongue. 
Just be clear with what you say. You're going to be a champion in the hereafter. As a matter of fact, you'll also be a champion on earth. Because everyone respects somebody who's honest. Everyone loves somebody who's straightforward. Especially when they do so in a civilized way. Now listen to the next conversation. Allah Azza wa Jal says, Inna aradna al-amanata ala samawati wal ardi wal jibal, faabayna an yahmilnaha, wa ashfaqna minha wa hamalaha al-insan, innahu kana zaluman jahula. This is one of the most incredible verses in the Quran for me. Every time I look at it and I hear it, I don't know how to explain it. Allah once said to the mountains, to the earth, to the heavens and the sky and the universe. He said to them, I want to give you an amana, a trust. Scholars differ what this trust is. Some say it's responsibility in worship. Others say the trust is the Qur'an or the message of the Qur'an. Others say different things. The truth of the matter is they're all correct. The responsibility in devotion and worship to Allah. That's a trust Allah gave you. So he looks at, or he addresses these, the mountains and the universe and says, look, I want to give you this trust. You know what they said? You know what the sky and the mountains, how they responded to Allah? They said, فَأَبَيْن We can't do it. And يَحْمِلَ We can't carry that kind of message, that kind of a manner. Because why? If they mess up, then they become subject, subject to some form of consequence or punishment. They do something wrong or they don't fulfill the amana to the level Allah expects of them, then there's going to be a consequence. So they don't want to do that. So they said, we're not able to. وَأَشْفَقَنَا مِنْهَا And they got scared. وَحَمَلَهَا insan. But people took on the responsibility of the amana. That's you and I. Now here's the lesson. A mountain could not handle this book. لو أنزلنا هذا القرآن على جبل When you put, when we took this message of the Quran, we put it on a mountain, what the mountain do? لرأيته خاشعا متصدعا من خشية الله The mountain crumbled into dust and exploded because it could not handle the immense fear that it felt with this message, it couldn't handle so it crumbled. But you and I as human beings memorize this book. We study this book. We recite it and listen to it every day. So how come this book crushed mountains, but it can't move some people? Their hearts, they listen to it. They study it in their hearts, nothing, no movement. The mountain, the universe was scared, couldn't handle this. Allah blessed you and I with the ability and strength to carry this message. So how come so many of us struggle to do it? A starting point, look at the tongue, are you Saying and speaking qawlan sadida. That's the lesson for us today. Clarity in speech. And then the verse continue, uh, concludes, إِنَّهُ كَانَ ظَلُومًا jahula. Allah still addresses that amongst these people who carry this message, there are those that are very ignorant. They're sinners and they're ignorant about the message. There, there are some people, I'm sure all of you meet them from time to time. No matter how many lectures, no matter how many reminders, no matter what you say, you just, you can't get through to them. You know what Allah calls people like that? He calls them jahula, jahlun, jahil. Jahil, by the way, doesn't mean somebody who's ignorant. Jahil from the word jahlun literally means somebody who can't control their emotions. So this is somebody that you're, you're telling them, and I get this all the time, people come to me and say, Brother Musa, can you talk to them? I've been trying for years, can you try? And I'll try and I can't get through. Allah says, غَلُوبًا <laughs> جَهُولًا 
And listen to the consequence. Allah Azza wa Jal concludes, لِيُعَذِّبَ اللَّهُ الْمُنَافِقِينَ وَالْمُنَافِقَاتِ وَالْمُشْرِكِينَ وَالْمُشْرِكَاتِ وَيَتُوبَ اللَّهُ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتِ وَكَانَ اللَّهُ غَفُورًا رَحِيمًا Again, the way that the surah concludes itself is incredible to me and that is what I will conclude with in the second part of the sermon. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continue to purify our tongues. May Allah continue to purify our actions. Allahumma ameen. Aqulu ma tasma'oon wa astaghfiru Allah li wa lakum risa'ir al-muslimin min kulli dham. Fastaghfiru innahu huwa al-ghafuru rahima. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah. Sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa man wala amma ba'd. If we don't take this seriously, Allah says that He will punish the hypocrites. He will punish those who associate with Allah, who give Him partners, who take rights that belong to Allah and give it to someone or something else. But then the verse says, وَيَتُوبَ اللَّهُ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتِ Allah will gift you the mu'min and mu'minat. You notice the ayah doesn't say, وَيَتُوبَ اللَّهُ عَلَى الْمُسْلِمِينَ وَالْمُسْلِمَاتِ Allah singled out the believer. Why? Because it's the people of Iman that's going to really, really and truly make tawbah the way they're supposed to make tawbah. Tawbah comes from the word taba yatubu, which means to turn away and walk the other direction. So part of your repentance with Allah is you actually have to make some kind of physical change where, there, where it's needed. If you have distractions in your home, if you can't stop clicking the mouse on the haram website, then you know what you gotta do? You gotta take a break from the computer. If you're one of those that every time, you know, you go through the Timmy's driveway and you gotta get on a Wi-Fi, you just can't seem to relax without it, it's a sign you need to relax, take a break. Even at the dinner table, parents, be very careful if you've got children that sit at the dinner table and they're texting while they're eating. Force them to have at least some physical engagement, not with digital devices, but actual people. Force them to talk and have a conversation. Ask them what their day is. Engage with them. And be careful of the child who responds to you and says one word. If you ever get this from your children, then realize you have some issues in the house to deal with. You're gonna have to address them. And that is when kids respond to you and they say, whatever. Call your son down, help me in the garage. Fine, whatever. Call your daughter, come clean up your room, come help me with the laundry, do the... Okay, fine, whatever. This is the first sign that your kid is not taking you as a parent seriously. And Allah Azza wa Jal concludes and says, وَكَانَ اللَّهُ غَفُورًا رَحِيمًا Allah is extremely forgiving and merciful. This is what I want to leave you with. Allah didn't say, وَاللَّهُ غَفُورُ Rahim. He said, وَكَان Can is a verb past tense. Not present. So the ayah actually is translated, Allah was always forgiving and merciful. Why is that so significant? You see a lot of people when they make mistakes and they do things that they regret, some of them fall into the state where they lose hope with Allah. I have people who come to me and say, I haven't prayed in 50 years. Why start now? I have Muslims that come to me and say, I was never good to my parents and they died. My, my father died and he hated me. My mother died and he hated me. And I feel terrible and I don't know what to do. Is there any hope for me? Listen to the language of the verse. Allah says, I was always forgiving and merciful to you. You were the one that lost hope in me. I never lost hope in you. So when you thought that there was no way out, that was a decision you made on your own that didn't come from Allah. Because Allah says, وَكَانَ I was always there. 
The 50 years you didn't pray, the 50 years you did this and you did that, I was always there. I just wanted you to ud'uni astajib lakum. Just call on me so I can answer you. I was there for you. Young people have to hear this verse every single day because they're always challenged. They're always challenged, whether it be through friendship, through anything else, peer pressures, anything else. They have to always be reminded, Oh my son, oh my daughter, don't worry. You can make these mistakes, but always remember Allah is always there. Turn to Him. I may not be there for you, the Imam may not be there for you, the community may not, but Allah is always there. My brothers and sisters, I conclude, may Allah Azza wa Jal continue to give us strength that we adhere to His message of the Qur'an and that we practice it and inherit it in our lives each and every day. Allahumma ameen. We send peace and blessings to our Rasul salawatu rabbi wa salamuhu alayka ma amarana subhanahu wa ta'ala fi tanzili. Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi. Ya ayyuha alladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim innaka hamidu majid. Allahumma khfir al-muslimin wal muslimat wal mu'minin والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات إنك قريب سميع مجيب الدعوات اللهم أصلح لنا دنيا الذي فيها معاشنا وأصلح لنا آخرة التي فيها معادنا وأصلح لنا دنيا الذي فيها معاشنا وجعل الحياة زيادة لنا لكل خير وجعل الموت راحة لنا من كل شر ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين واقم السلام